Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop. Welcome to this month's Four Horsemen build. As always, if you like the content, make sure you subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell. So, as uh, pretty much obvious, we're doing a 70 Chevelle S, well, I'm assuming it's an SS, from Hot Wheels. Uh, this month, the theme is the 70s. And this one's a little close to my heart, A, because it's Chevelle, B, because it's the 70s, and C, because I'm the one who chose this month. <laughs> so, I picked the casting and the theme. So, obviously, I'm not going to show you. I stripped it, drilled it, tapped it, and... Very, very decent casting. This is as, as much as I, if anybody knows me, I am a huge Chevelle fanatic. I've owned multiple Chevelles, a 68, a 69 convertible, 69 hardtop, and my very first car was a 72. And I have a ton of Hot Wheels. And I don't really do them very often, um, mainly because I don't want to screw them up. I just like them so much, I'm afraid to actually do them, so... But I uh, bit the bullet this time because I picked it and I sent one to everybody. Um, it's got a metal chassis, so you can see I'm not really paying too much um, attention or care to the wheels. So I got these, uh, they're torque thrusts. They're about as close to Krager's as I could come um, as far as wheels goes. So fitting them and trying to get the right rake was a little bit of a challenge. But once I did that, which is a little bit of grinding and fitting, now it's just really just attacking the few body lines that were on this as far as casting uh, defects is what I call them. But they are really just casting lines. There's two on the roof. Um, there's a couple little itty bitty spots here and there on the hood and one on the side. But a file and a sanding stick or sandpaper, if you got it, takes it off real, real simple. You don't have to go too, too hard on this because otherwise you're going to end up gouging the, uh, the metal because it is soft. So just real light, go on an angle, you won't have any problems. And then the sanding sticks are two-sided, rough and smooth, and I kind of bounce back and forth. If there's still some heavier areas that I don't want to hit with the file, I'll use the rough side. Then scotch bright pad just to clean off the surface the best I can. I'm not overly concerned because I'm going to be priming it, and I'm going to be putting a ton of paint on this thing. <laughs> um, but the scotch bright really gives it a nice... Nice surface, and it gives the primer something to adhere to because it's just just enough. So um, you'll see me use a scotch Bright more often than not on just about every build. I may not always film it, but I always use it. You can see there, it's nice and shiny. So as I was stating, the, the front wheels weren't too, too bad. The back wheels, I have to um, pretty much groove out the channel where the original wheel sat and because the set of wheels i have aren't the right size as far as length i have to use a tube um, on the front just to get the um, i mean you get 50 50 shots sometimes you, you get a set of wheels and the axles are perfect and, but more often than not they're too short or too long so the 1 16th brass tubing from k and s works perfectly and the Hot Wheels axles, the stock ones, fit in there perfectly. So that's, again, you'll see me do that a lot just because it makes it simpler to not have to worry about all the, you know, matching set of wheels for the right this or the right that. You could just pretty much do like I'm doing here, cut the axles in half. If they're too long to begin with, which was the case this time, you'll just trim them down a little bit so that they fit inside the axle. So when you push one wheel in, it doesn't push the other wheel out. Um, and I've done that, and I've glued them in that way. <laughs> so, um, again, fit and double fit and check and make sure when you poke one side, the other side doesn't poke out. Because I've done it, and uh, it's not fun. So, I got a couple black pens. I'm going to do the rear bumper pad. Um, the Chevelle SS, SS's came with the black pads on the back. I'm doing that. Then I'm using a little bit of red for the tail lights, And I got some yellow for the front marker lights. And because I want it to be somewhat of an SS, I'm going to black out the grill 
because that was standard. And I'm using the Citadel paints, which I use in just about every video. And I painted the bow tie blue just because. Um, once the body's pretty much ready for paint, I'll I degrease it. And then I'll use, um, depending on the casting, I'll use mineral spirits. There's no rhyme or reason to when I do it or why I do it. I just, uh, every once in a while, I just degrease and then I'll wash with soap and water. But more often than not, I will use a quick coat of mineral spirits just to really get the excess off. By this point, there shouldn't be much left anyways. So I primed it white. And I've got some anniversary gold. And I'll be using all splash paints except for my clear coat. I had an idea, and my theme for the 70s was kind of a wild paint job, but not too crazy. Um, and it's hard to find that balance sometimes, especially for me. I either go too extreme or not extreme enough. So the gold was my base coat. And what I wanted to do is a pretty much a panel paint job. And the gold was just going to be the base of what I was going to do. And I end up screwing up, but you can't really tell um, in the next step because I grabbed the wrong paint by accident, but it worked out in the end anyways. But the gold, again, it's just a base coat because I'm going to put some candies over this. So the, the gold, for me, has always worked out to be a really good base. And the anniversary gold from Splash uh, is perfect. And Splash paints, you can put them on right out of the bottle. There's no mixing. There's no confusion as to how much this or how much that to put in it it's you shake it up dump it in your airbrush and paint it it's a two-part system so you obviously you have to clear coat so it's a base coat clear coat system but um to me it always works out perfectly i end up putting um three three coats of of gold so you can see my first coat was kind of light second coat a little bit heavier and by the time you get to the third coat you can put it on pretty heavy and uh, it won't run. Um, candies, you got to be careful of a little bit. It's a little bit thinner. But the regular base coats aren't a problem whatsoever. Even the candies, you have to go really heavy. So I got my Tamiya tapes. Um, I got the vinyl, what I call pinstriping tape, into different thicknesses, plus the regular masking. This was, and I really truncated the time frame on this, even though I did a time lapse. I still cut out a lot. This was. This took me about an hour and a half just to mask off all these little bits and pieces and trial and error and how I was going to do it. The other thing I wanted to do, as I said, I wanted to do panels, but I also wanted to maintain some integrity of the Chevelle and have the racing stripes on it. So you can see there, that's kind of what I'm doing. And it, it's a little daunting uh, when you start dealing with the masking. I, if you're going to do any kind of uh, compound curves or anything like that use this vinyl tape this stuff is amazing you can bend that thing around a corner no problem whatsoever so i got this grass green and it says right there candy i don't know why i was thinking it wasn't uh, just a regular green i have no idea all it really meant was i had to put some extra coats on and i had an idea of these multiple shades of green with the gold and maybe a little bit of pearl white and I, again, I was kind of winging it at this point. I knew what I wanted. I had a vision in my head. But when I when I started applying this, I'm like, as soon as I did, I'm like, right about here is when I realized I had candy paint. <laughs> Just not paying attention. Um, there's a lot going on and, you know, no excuse. But regardless, it works out. It just means, you know, with the candies, you have to put them on real light and real even. So right about here, it looks like... Um, baby pea green but the more you add to it the more it because it's going over gold and it's a candy it, it starts to um, develop its own shade I guess you could say and right about here I was really kind of digging it so you can see right there the panels that I did the stripes and I could have stopped here and clear coated it um, but that's not me <laughs> so I figured why not let's just keep going until I screw it up so I get some sparkle candy um, which has got a very silvery tint to it, uh, but it's definitely a metal flake. And the stuff goes on awesome. I love it. Um, I've got three or four different ones, and I'm not sure. I've only played with a couple. They have different thicknesses of flake. And I'm not even sure if you can buy them anymore. Um, 
again, I'm not a, I'm not a rep for splash paints. I just really enjoy them. So I'll put a few light coats. You don't have to go really heavy on this. The other thing I really like, again, I know I'm kind of harping on it, but on the splash paints, when you pour it in, if you pour too much, it's not a big deal. You can just dump it right back in the um, in the jar and not have to worry about it. So that's another thing. If you mix too, you don't have to mix anything, so you don't have to worry about mixing too much and then throwing it away or trying to save it. So you can kind of see right there, it gave it a silvery tone to it. And it, it's, it's pretty much a candy. It's almost a candy tint with metallic in it. I've got all these other real candies that I actually isolated after my green grass fiasco. So I've got magenta, brandy wine, root beer, which I know I'm not going to use. I'm not going to use the green again. I've got apple red, like if I want to do a candy apple red, and then a lemon yellow. So not really having a clue. I've never, I haven't used any of these except for, I think, the root beer and the, obviously, the green one. So I decided to go with this magenta. Uh, did I go with the magenta? Yeah, I went with the magenta. And it was a toss-up because I wanted like a red hue to it. But going over gold and green, this is what I ended up with. It's almost like a rose, and it's perfect. I actually love the way this came out. But as stated, it's a base coat, clear coat. So I'd gone to my automotive store about a year ago, and I picked up this 2K clear system, which is hardener, and the actual clear coat. It's a four to one ratio. That's it. It's that simple. Um, four half droplets does the whole car, plus you have extra. So after the clear coat dries, I'm going to do the front rear marker lights. And then I took like two hours to do all the bright work around the windows. Uh, because with the chrome pen, it just gets so, it's such a pain in the neck because it stays wet for a while. So you, I have to get really up close because I shake like crazy and I can't see for crap. So it takes me a little bit longer to do, do one window, let it dry, do the other window, let it dry. So I'm not manhandling it, um, trying to see. But I really, really love the way this came out. And don't forget, guys, make sure you check out, and I'll have links in the description down below, to all the builds for the Four Horsemen. So please go check them out. Make sure you leave comments on not only mine, but theirs as well. And um, that's why we do it. We do it for for every, we do it for ourselves, obviously, but we do it for other people. And we like we like to share our builds. And it's good to see everybody's different take on the same theme. You know, I could have gone with uh, a silver car and a Brady Bunch sticker or something. You know, I could have done anything. But uh, everybody has their own um, their own own ways of approaching things, which I think is cool. That's how we all learn. Here's all the pieces, parts, ready to be assembled. You can see the chrome I did around the trim. That's actually supposed to be stainless, but this is what I started with. Very good casting, very clean, very surprised, <laughs> considering how many Hot Wheels has made. White interior, blue windows, the only thing I really wasn't happy with, but it is what it is. But it's a metal base, metal car. And this is what I ended up with. I absolutely love the way this came out. I hope you guys do as well. I've got a, I've got like four or five videos here, plus a few pictures. Make sure you check them all out. Don't forget to check out the other guys. Make sure to leave me a comment, like, subscribe. I will catch you on the next one.